What is up, down and sideways, you beautiful people of all shapes and sizes? Welcome to another Reppy of League Unlock Flying Han Solo. On today's episode, as we dive into the preview type of action for round two playoffs in the LEC. If you're looking forward to that G2 BDS winner's bracket, sorry. You got to wait a week. They're not getting on the rift this weekend. We're going through loser's bracket. And you've got Fnatic and Vitality in that second wave of loser's bracket awaiting the winners. This is now the do or die. You drop another series and you are going home, which obviously no one wants to be doing in the summer split. Starting Team Heretics versus SK Gaming. Both had disappointing opening rounds in their playoff run but obviously the expectations were a whole lot higher uh, for SK than Team Heretics based on how the last let's call it week and a half of that first round Robin played out and initially because of that I think the ceiling has been much higher for SK so they should be the favorite setting into this one Team Heretics are going to need a level up and specifically I know we've harped on it many many times but the only way they're winning this series is if you get more out of Perks in the mid lane. Perks versus Niski is obviously a matchup that we've seen many times. They've both been mid laners for Cloud9. These guys have kind of been connected over the last few years. And for all the washed up Perks is Grandpa Perks memes that we've been talking about, these guys are both 25. They're both the same age. And 25, not a grandpa at all, guys. If that's the case, then tell you what i am a great 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 grandpa but um you know perks is a bit younger than yankos but he has failed both the eye test and the numbers test especially the last two weeks of action in the winter season these meta picks azir he doesn't look comfortable on corky he's packaging in and getting blown up and then of course i mean he hasn't really been able to pivot outside of those picks. He's been losing in lane. He's been having minimal impact in team fights and skirmishes around the map. So this is this is now the time for him to make a statement for all the Twitter haters, keyboard warriors to get put in the dirt for perks in this head-to-head -head matchup against Niski. He'll have his work cut out for him though because Niski had a pretty damn good winter split overall for SK. These squads did, of course, Beat up in the regular season as everybody did and this was heretics coming away with the win it was a few weeks ago this was the seraphine santa bot lane cheese that came out of team heretics so we'll see if that and other kind of wacky bot lanes or something that's going to be prioritized in the pick ban in this series uh we've seen exakick and dos mostly just play more standard picks exakick looks like the best lucian in eu which is about a two inch limbo bar that you have to get over because it's been very underwhelming in the entire western scene but i don't see team herricks getting things online and working against sk i don't have a ton of faith in either of these squads going forward but definitely going to give the edge to sk i think we're getting some three game sets as it's do or die uh, for a lot of these squads, but SK taking it in that third game, if you're asking me, and I am a prophet and have never once been wrong in any matchup in the history of ever, so just saying. Giant X versus Mad Lions Koi. That's your second matchup. This, I think, is even more one-sided in the matchup. I gotta go MDK in this one. They've shown so many, they're one of the most, ah, what's the word I want to look for? Exciting, isn't it? It's, it gives me the most faith because they're trying something different than a lot of other teams in EU. And a lot of that comes with having four rookies on a squad. And if you're looking at key matchup, look no further than the top lane. You could not have two different or more polarizing players to talk about. Number one, Odo has been around eight years in the pro scene. And Mirwin, you got a rookie coming in. Odo is the most stable top laner maybe that we have in EU. He is an immovable object. He will at least go even in almost every single matchup. And Mirwin is an absolute psycho. Just look to the last matchup these two squads played. And that was one of the Fiddlesticks top games that we got out of him. Obviously, 
his most played is Gwen. We've seen the Varus top, and I think that's just that's just the mild level on the Scoville scale of top lane picks for Mirwin. So seeing number one, if Odo can hold up, hold his own in this laning matchup specifically, where Mirwin has the most solo kills, tied for the most with Adam, and Odo has yet to get one. It's just two completely different play styles. So depending on how much jungle attention this top lane gets, this this one matchup alone, I think, is enough to completely shift the series. And no disrespect on Odo. We've seen him pop off and carry games on Nar. He's played a bunch of Aatrox games. Beerwin hasn't even played Aatrox yet uh, this split. So lots of different things to dive into when you are looking at that top lane. We've also got rookie versus rookie in the mid lane with Jackie's kind of getting dropped right into a hot pipe and frying pan matching up against Caps in his first ever playoff matchup. I think he's going to have an advantage against Frascawi. He's Jackie's has had the more impactful uh, year as a rookie individually, if you're asking me, in that mid lane matchup. So excited to see uh, the growth for Jackie's. And that's the one or the main avenue that you can maybe talk about Giant X having an edge and coming away with this series win is if Jackie's continues to show some growth and have some pop-off performances, which isn't out of the realm of possibility. If SK versus Heretics, I'm going 60-40 in the favor uh, of SK. Bad lines for Giant X, it's, it's not much more. I'd say maybe 70-30 in the favor of Mad Lions, but uh, with the potential for Jackie's to be able to take over some of these games. But either way, there's there's so much young talent. Rookies on three out of these four squads uh, making their first ever playoff runs and just continuing to see the growth. With how some of these teams play in winter, I'm excited to see how different they look when summer, when spring rolls around and when we're fully vying for some of these international showdowns. But all that being said, I'm actually, you know, I, I've convinced myself. I'm going upset for this one. I got all the faith that Mad Lions uh, were going to be the ones, but I've hyped myself up about Jackie's. I think this guy's got something. Um, we've still seen so few, such a small sample size out of him, but I've convinced myself just talking here that I'm going Giant X with the, not quite Giant, and at least medium-sized upset over Mad Lions. But whoever wins these two matchups, they already got their opponents waiting in Fnatic and Vitality, and they, Fnatic more so, I think, should be okay with pretty much anyone that they're matching up against. Vitality obviously surprised a little bit uh, with their win against SK, and then even how competitive they were against BDS. Whoever wins these matchups has the potential to take down Vitality as well, but Fnatic should be the big favorites. Really competitive three game set against uh, G2. Feels like we were finally seeing, not finally, it's been a couple weeks, but we're seeing that playoff form Fnatic come out. Humanoid, I mean, Humanoid's been stepping up pretty much the entirety of the split, but we saw that bot lane duo of Noah and Jun really coming into their own, really finding that synergy now that they've been developing over winter. So Fnatic, Fully expecting them to be a squad matching up against either G2 or BDS as the rounds continue. Vitality's going to have their work cut out for them. And honestly, I think if it's not Vitality, whoever wins that Giant X Mad Lions Koi is the squad I have the next highest amount of faith in. Whoever wins that wouldn't be surprised, might even favor them depending on how good they look in a matchup against Vitality. But I mean, going forward... Are any of these teams really going to be a, a test for BDS and G2? Well, that remains to be seen. we got to see the matchup against G2 and BDS. I know everyone's been harping on the lack of play style diversity that a team like BDS has, but I got a hunch that they're going to show that they can do more than just pick God's champions for Adam, that they can play through Ice, they can play through Nuke, and Lebrov, again, best Blitzcrank in EU. So they have they have many more win conditions than even they did in 2023 and I think Ice coming in to replace Crowny, they haven't missed a beat. BDS has maybe even looked better and more consistent in this winter split. So as harsh as we were on that move, Ice has fit in pretty seamlessly and seems to have a pretty good relationship at least early on with most of the squads, but LEC this weekend taken center stage because we got no LCK, we got no LPL on Lunar New Year break. We still have LCS, of course, but LCS is 
best served as an appetizer or a dessert, sometimes a bad dessert. But LEC with the playoffs, uh, there's going to be even more emphasis on these squads in EU as at least a couple of squads will have their season come to an end for winter. Luckily, it's a pretty quick turnaround before you're getting back to the spring split. But that is it today for League God Lock. My name is Eric. You people stay beautiful as you always are. And thank you so much for your continued support and joining us day in, day out. We'll catch you on that flippity flip.